Hello and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the empirical and molecular formula. We're just going to do three examples and by the end of it you will see exactly how these questions work. I'm not going to go into all the details of how they use this in real life or anything like that. You guys are in school, you just want to know how to do it so you can get through your tests and exams and get some nice marks. So what you do is the following. They're going to give you a couple of elements and those elements are usually going to be given either in grams or they're going to be given as a percentage. Okay, so it will be either in grams or as a percentage. But even if they give it to you as a percentage, it's still going to be based on mass. Now we know that chemistry is all about moles. So we need to try convert those percentages into a mole. Okay, so now how are we going to do that? Well, what we do, we do a little trick. We, we know that if you add these percentages up, it's going to give you 100 because you can't have um, all percentages add up to 100, right? So let's pretend that this sample that they've given us is 100 grams, okay? So if it's 100 grams and the percentages add up to 100, well, now what we can do is we can say, well, that means we have 36.5 grams of Na and we've got 25 point four grams of sulfur and thirty eight point one grams of oxygen many of my students say Kevin shouldn't the oxygen be O2 yes technically oxygen is a diatomic molecule but when you are busy with this section you need to treat oxygen as its own individual little thing you'll become more used to that as we go through this lesson now, Kevin, why have we converted it to grams? Well, we are one step closer to moles because we know that moles from our previous lesson is M over MR. And so if I know the mass of each of them, I can convert them into moles. So for the sodium or the Na, I can say that that's going to be its mass, which is 36.5 divided by its molar mass, which you would get from the periodic table. But to save space, I've already added their molar masses here from the periodic table, and Na is 23. So if you go work that out, the moles for Na is going to be about 1.59. You can just round to two decimal places. For sulfur, it's going to be its mass, which is 25.4, over its molar mass, which I've already found in the periodic table, as 32. And so that's going to be 25.4 divided by 32, which is 0, 0,79. And then oxygen, I'm going to just scroll down, is 38.1 grams over its molar mass, which I found earlier. Let me just scroll up on the periodic table as 16. And so then you can just type that in the calculator, and that's going to give us 2,38. All right, all you do next is you divide each of those numbers that you have just found by the smallest one. So the smallest one is going to be 0, 0,79. So you are going to divide each of them by 0, 0,79. So we're going to say 1.59 divided by 0, 0,79 for the sodium, and that gives us 2,01. Okay, then we're going to do this one. We're going to say 0, 0,79 divided by the smallest one, but it is 0, 0,79. So that's just going to give us 1, and then you're going to do 2,38 over 0, 0,79, and that's going to give you, well, 3,01. Now, what happens is that these numbers are all fairly close to being whole numbers, and so we will just assume that this is going to be 2, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 3. So the ratio of them will be 2 to 1 to 3. So the empirical formula for, um, for Na, S, and O will just be, we'll just write it out as Na to the 2, S, we don't say to the 1, and then O to the 3. Can you see what I've done there? I've just taken the ratio number answers and I've put them into a formula. Na is 2, S is 1, and oxygen is 3. That is called the empirical formula. You don't need to understand the background. They're not going to test you on that. You just need to know how to do it. Get your marks finished. Okay. The next part of this question says, determine the molecular formula if the molar mass is 378. So this looks like a molecular formula, but the empirical formula is not the proper molecular formula. It's the simplified version of the molecular formula. So all you need to do in a question like this, and trust me, they will ask this, is we are going to just work out what the mass of this is. And so that's going to be 
2 times by 23, because sodium is 23, from the periodic table. Sulfur is 32, and then th there will be 3 oxygens, and each oxygen is 16 from the periodic table. That's going to give us 2 times 23 plus 32 plus 3 times 16, and that's going to give us 126 grams. So that means that the mass of this is 126 grams. However, if we look at the question, they tell us that the proper mass is 378. So what we need to do is see how many of these 126s can fit into the 378. So we say 378 divided by 126, and you should always get a whole number. If you don't, you've done something wrong, we get an answer of 3. So it means that the real molecule, the molecular formula, is 3 times as heavy as this. So we can now update the answer, or the, for the answer for B would be Na, not to the 2, but to the 6, because we have to multiply everything by 3, S to the 3, and O to the 9. This is the molecular formula, and then the one in red, that is the empirical formula, and they are going to ask you to do both in an exam. And so he here we go, guys, here's another question. Um, they give you They'll always do it like this, they'll give you a bunch of chemicals, typically in um, grams or as a percentage, but the percentage is also based on mass. It's never going to be based on moles. So here they give us a percentage, so what we said is that percentages always add up to 100. So let's pretend that this is 100 grams, there's nothing wrong with that. So that means that the carbon is actually 49.5 grams, the nitrogen is 28.8 grams, Hydrogen is 5.2 grams, and then oxygen is 16.6 .6 grams. Now that we have each of those in grams, we can use N equals to M over MR, and we could go get the moles of each one. So the carbon moles would be, uh, we're using the formula N equals M over MR, so the mass is 49.5, and then you would need the MR, or the, the molar mass of carbon, but I've gone and found those on the periodic table already, just to clear up a bit of space. And so you can go work that out as 4.125. I'm just going to keep three decimal places because 125 is really nice. But if there were a whole lot of decimals, then I would round it up. For nitrogen, it's going to be 28.8 over its molar mass, which is 14. And if we work that out, you end up with 2,06 grams. Sorry, I mean moles. Okay, that's mole and that's mole. Then we can do hydrogen, so we know that hydrogen is going to be 5.2 over its molar mass. Let me scroll up for you. Its molar mass is 1. And so that's just going to give us 5.2 moles. Then we're going to look at oxygen, which is going to be 16.6 .6 over its molar mass, which is 16. And that's going to give us 1.0375 moles. Next step, we divide by all of those by the lowest one. So the lowest one is going to be the oxygen. And so we're going to say 4.125. It's quite a long process, but extremely easy. And that's going to give us 3.98. For the nitrogen, it's going to give us 2.06 divided by 1.0375. And that's going to give us 1.99. And then for the hydrogen, it'll be 5.2 over 1.0375, and that'll give us 5.01. And then for the hydrogen, it's going to divide by itself, because it is the smallest one, and that's going to give us 1. Then these numbers should always, well, they'll be fairly close to whole numbers, and so we can obviously round this up to 4, this one up to 2, this one to 5, and this one to 1. So now when we put the formula down, the empirical formula, it'll be C, 4, N, 2, H, 5, O. That is called the empirical formula. The next question, B, says determine the molecular formula if the molar mass is 194. So what we do in a question like this, remember, is we go work out the mass of this one. And so that's going to be 4 carbons, which will be 4 times 12, plus 2 nitrogens, which is 2 times 14, plus 5 hydrogens, plus an oxygen. And if we go do that, we get 97. But now that they tell us that the molar mass is actually 194. So we see how many of these can fit into 194. So we divide it. And if we've done it correct, it should always be a whole number. Yes, we get the number 2. So what that means is that the actual formula is double 
this one. And so the molecular formula will have to double. And so it's going to be C8, N4, H10, and then O2. And so we'll end this lesson by, with quite an interesting one. Notice in this question they don't give us percentages, they give us grams. But that is actually better, because if you remember in our previous ones they gave us percentages, we then had to convert those into grams and then into moles. Now they've given us the grams already, so we can go straight to the moles. So for carbon it's going to be 19.95 over its molar mass. Now the molar mass of carbon is 12 and that'll be 1.6625. Remember, I'm using the formula N equals to M over MR. And then for hydrogen, it's going to be 3.35 grams over its molar mass, which is 1, and so that's just going to be 3.5. And then for oxygen, it would be 26.7 over its molar mass, which is 16, and that's going to be 1.66875. If there's not a lot of decimals on the calculator, then I would just write all of them. Then that we are, we've already calculated the moles, so at this step you divide by the smallest one. Now guys, I have some students, they'll look at these two, and they'll be like, hmm, which one's the smallest? Guys, they are the same. They're both 1,66. Um, it's not going to change your answer much by being so specific with this type of question. So just take these two as both being the smallest. So in fact, you can just chop off the end of that. Trust me, it's okay. So that's 1.66. So then that is going to be the smallest number. So to find the carbon ratio, you're going to say 1.66 divided by the smallest one, which is 1.66. For hydrogen, it's going to be 3.35 divided by 1.66. And that's going to give us, and then for oxygen, it's going to be 16 I mean 1.66 divided by 1.66 and that's going to be 1. So when you put this formula next to each other and remember the order doesn't matter it will be C H 2 O. Can you see because the C was 1, hydrogen was 2 and oxygen is 1. Perfect. That is called the empirical formula. The order as I said does not matter. Moving on to question B, they now tell us determine the molecular formula which is the real one if the molar mass is 60. Okay, so what we do is we work out the mass of this from the periodic table. So that's going to be 12 plus 2 hydrogens, which is 2, and then 16 for oxygen. And if you go add that up, you're going to end up with 30. So the mass of the empirical one is 30, but the real one is 60. Well, that obviously means we're going to have to double everything, right? And so the molecular formula which is the real formula, you're going to have to double everything. So it'll be C2H4O2. Guys, that is how you do empirical, and that is also how you do the molecular formula. Thank you very much for watching.